Hello everybody, what is going on? I am Joey. Today you join me here for another race analysis video. Now this was the last race of this year's karting season in the Cal Speed Super Series and I wanted to go out with a good result and unfortunately we got the exact opposite. However, as you'll see in this video, things could have turned out much differently depending on how the rules were enforced. So here we are, waiting on the grid, waiting for the flag to go. And off the line, we get a pretty decent start. And I've had kart 59 before, and the thing with Cal Speed is some carts have good top speed and some don't. And this one off the line wasn't the best. And you can see already in turn one, really rubbing wheels. Now, I want you to pay attention kart 38, because you're going to see we're going to have quite a few battles with him, and the main point of this race comes down. Now, going through Contino, I'm on the inside, which usually is the quickest way. But check this out. He holds his line on the outside, fully over the curb, and coming into the technical hairpin, I know as long as I keep him on the outside, I'm fine. Well, as you can see here, I end up having to go on the inside some, with some slower carts, and what that does is it forces me wide through the sweeper, and unfortunately, because it's a long radius turn, if you're on the outside, you're going to be the slow one. So we lost quite a few spots there, which I was not too happy with, but I couldn't do anything. And then through the technical complex, gaining a few positions, but then again, I get blocked. And that was the thing about this layout and just this race. I just kept getting blocked no matter how I took it. So lap one again, down the inside through the turn four, and people are going wide and it's just chaotic. And that's how it is in the B main, I've learned in the Super Series. Look at three wide through bypass. It's just chaotic. So I'm constantly having to lift and you can see we're already losing out big time to the guys in the front. Interesting part actually, if you look, there's some sort of fire near the old steel mill. Not sure what that was about. Anyways, behind me, got a, some carts coming up. And look at 38 again, dives down in the S's. And I don't know about cart 38, I've never had it before, how it is power-wise, but it might have been quicker. Maybe it was me, I'm not exactly sure. And that was the thing about this race, because the conditions were colder than usual, a lot of the carts drove differently. Now through here, I'm just trying to push, get in that Cal Speed draft as they call it, and just see if I can gain any positions, and I can't, and boom, there's the contact. And this ends up getting me a drive-through penalty. Let me take you through what exactly happened. So coming through the technical complex, I'm lifting to create a little bit of a gap and cart number 38 dives down the inside and he bumps me there. I put my hand up because what I've noticed in this situation, I've had this happen before last year at Technico, is normally if you get bumped there, you would just go wide. The issue is you have this massive barrier here. So your only option is to go around or to break and you don't want to hold people up. Although unfortunately there was a big gap behind me. So I probably should have done that. So what ends up happening is I end up going to go all the way around the barrier, off into the dirty line, and I rejoin, I come out in front of him. So I believe what happens with the penalty is because I am in front of him, they say I gained a position, even though going into that turn, I was in front of him to begin with, so I didn't really lose or gain. So quite an interesting situation there. So because of that, I was just like, okay, I'm going to continue. I thought about lifting and giving it to him, but then I thought again, because I was ahead in the beginning, I'm not really sure what to do. Now, if you take another look, because I'm on the outside here, I didn't even see him. That's the thing. Had I seen him, I would have given him room and let him come through. But again, because these carts are on the mirrors, when you can't see people, it's kind of hard. And you can see there's the contact. He hits my side pod right there. And that energy just sends me wide. So coming out of bypass, I'm looking because I'm expecting a penalty and I see the meatball flag. And there it says, cart 59, that's me. So at this point, I have a penalty, and I'm like, all right, there went my race. And he shoves it up in the S's. And I'm thinking here, if anything, because I have a penalty, let's just work on getting through together. He comes up the inside because cart 38 forces me wide in the carousel. And I'm just pretty pissed right now. So here we are. I put my hand up, and we're coming into the pit lane or the penalty box, which is not the pit lane. And I do my little drive-through penalty. And you can just see everyone's past me, I believe. And so I'm dead last at this point. I'm thinking, all right, let's go for a comeback. But I'm so far back from anyone. I'm just like, I don't know if I have the raw pace to do this. So at this point, I just kind of get into that calm mentality and think, let's just go. It's the last race of the year. And I may as well just go for some big overtakes because what do I have to lose? I'm last. So here we are three laps later coming up to turn four and I'm finally at the back of the pack. And so here I'm just trying to keep that calm mentality and overtake when necessary. Because the thing at Cal Speed is because these four-stroke carts don't accelerate that well, when you go for an overtake, it's very costly coming off the racing line. So ideally, you just kind of want to bump draft and push each other. Through here, I'm like, I hope I can get by in the S's. Luckily, he sees me, and I'm able to get by. 
One thing I also did was take a brand new line through the S's, which gained me a bunch of time. Thank you, Chris Carter, for telling me about that. But through here, I'm just hoping we can bump draft and kind of push our way through. So here we are a lap later, and I can see that there's a guy in Contino way slower than normal. And so I'm trying to get by him, and somehow he has a great drive out of that corner, which I'm struggling to comprehend. But I look for a move, no opportunity. Then I kind of position the cart for an overtake. But again, you want to be on the inside on the sweeper turn, since obviously you don't want to be in the larger radius. So through here, I'm trying to push to catch that group, and I'm realizing I don't really think I have the pace. However, coming out of the technical complex, as you can see, we're starting to gain. It's slow, but there's some movement coming. In this race, the field is bunched up pretty good. So I'm just trying to look for a mistake here, and all of a sudden, I bump him by accident there. He goes wide, and he gains a bunch from that, so I'm not too worried. And so this race was just, there's just a lot of sloppy racing everywhere. I noticed that. So through here, you can just see I'm relaxing on the straightaway and just waiting because the corners is where I'm gonna catch them. Catching, then I have to break again. And this is the thing about the technical layout. It's very hard to overtake, kind of like Classico in a way. And because of that, you really have to have a huge pace on the cart in front of you for an overtake. I send it down the inside and it works and then it doesn't work. What ended up happening with this kart 59 was it was good handling, which was rare for a kart at cal speed to be perfectly balanced, and it had a good top speed, but the issue is it just didn't accelerate. On the start, I didn't gain that many positions. Matter of fact, I lost some. And you can see on that overtake, I lost a bunch coming out of the hairpin. So you look, I come down the inside, clean move, a little bit of rubbing, and normally I'd pull away and it just doesn't bite. So all of a sudden, kart 41 gets by and I'm like, great, nothing I can really do here. And that was the thing about this car. It didn't accelerate, but once it got itself going, it was good. But because that technical hairpin is such a low speed turn, you need a good accelerating car. And because it's a drive and drive, that's just luck. And to this day, luck wasn't on my side. But I get a good drive on the top speed and I send it down and it works. And then again, it just doesn't accelerate. And it just flies right by me. So I'm pretty frustrated at this point. But then again, I'm thinking, if it's gonna be like my last race, which I didn't do a video on because I was stuck behind the driver of Kart 41 for the entire race, I was just, you know, pretty much out of luck. Now, what was weird about this car was it was hitting the rev limiter or something on the straightaways. So I don't know if it was limited or had a good top speed and was able to reach it, but it was just weird. And I don't know what was with this car, but it kept varying performance throughout the race because towards the end of the race, it ended up losing speed. So I've never really seen that before. So coming up to the technical complex, I know I just gotta try to get on his rear bumper, give him a little bit of breathing room. And again, this car just doesn't really bite, which is very frustrating. And so I'm pushing, I'm pushing, trying to vary my line. I'm on the inside for turn four and I go for it and it works. Hoping this car accelerates, it finally does. Last lap. And at this point I'm thinking, any position I can get is great. If I can hold this position, great. Cause this car was just so inconsistent. So I just wasn't sure what to expect. So here we are coming out to the last turn and I'm not gonna catch him by the line. And so it's just a very lackluster race in my opinion. It just, nothing exciting seemed to happen. And it's just interesting. You know, most of my races this year have been very energetic and crazy. And this race, that just wasn't the case. Now, I'm not usually the kind of person who's gonna complain about the rules constantly and beg for things to be changed. So obviously I wasn't even in a championship contending position. However, I was just curious on the rules because I had an instance where I was the cart who made contact and one time I overtook someone and I did get a penalty. And so I just wasn't sure where the rules came in. So I thought I'd read you a little bit out of the rule book just so we understand the situation. So according to rule 10.1.3 on overtaking, it says, the overtaking driver is expected to obtain dominant position prior to the entry of both drivers into the upcoming corner. Dominant position is defined as the nose of the overtaking cart surpassing the imaginary bisectional line of the cart being overtaken. That is considered to be the steering wheel of the cart that is being overtaken. Therefore, he would need to pass my steering wheel before I'd have to let him by in the corner. Looking at the situation, he definitely did not have dominant position and I didn't even see him, that's the other thing. The other part I thought I'd go to is the rule on racing room, which says, drivers are expected to give ample racing room and not force other drivers into a situation where they make contact either with the drivers or walls or where they force another driver off course. Now in that situation, I had no other option but to go off course. So 
pretty interesting there that I ended up getting the penalty. And like I said, I think I got it because I gained a position even though I was ahead going into the corner and I stayed that way coming out, but it's the way it is. So it doesn't, I don't really care too much since I wasn't really fighting for anything to begin with. So there you have it. That was my race. Pretty interesting one. Unfortunately, not the way I wanted it to go. And I think for my very first full year doing the Cal Speed Super Series and the Cal Eastern Series, very happy with how it went. And next year, we'll just keep pushing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content to come. And as always, I'm Joey, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.